So if she wins in November, Rashida Tlaib will become the first Muslim woman in Congress. Two years ago, she was forcibly removed from a Trump speech in Detroit. There she is. Uh, she was accused of heckling. Well, last week, she won her primary for the U.S. House seat in Michigan's 13th congressional district. She is running unopposed in a deeply blue district in November and is set to potentially make history. She joins me now. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to have you. So it was three and a half years ago when he was a candidate for President uh, Donald Trump at the time that he called for a complete ban on Muslims entering America. So this year, fast forward, we see a record number of Muslim Americans running for Congress, uh, somewhere around 90 declaring their candidacy. You're one of them. If you win, you would be the first Muslim woman to serve in Congress. If President Trump had not become president, do you think you'd be running today? Uh, I think at some point I will probably continue my public service. I think a lot of people don't realize I was the first um, Muslim woman, Amer uh, American woman uh, in the Michigan legislature. Mm -hmm. And so I was always attracted to you know, public service, but more community activism. Uh, when you say heckling, I said, well, I was asked a question, and they pulled me out for asking him if he ever read the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, the most American thing I could do is to push back on some of his uh, rhetoric and, you know, this call for a ban. Of course, a lot of my passion and what I brought to the campaign mm -hmm. did uh, come from uh, the fact that Trump uh, has made my children, my two boys, uh, question whether or not they could tell people or whether or not they're of Muslim faith. Uh, really? I know a lot of moms, uh, even across my district, I started a chapter called Moms Against Trump, and we're really tired of our children uh, kind of feeling this sense of that they don't belong or that they're so, less than because the President of the United States says so. So, Rashida, let me ask you about this, because you saw over the weekend on the one-year mark from the Charlottesville yes. Uh, deadly protest that the president tweeted quote I condemn all types of racism and acts of violence peace to all Americans now Senator Tim Scott the only Republican African-American serving in the Senate last year called out Trump and said he had a lack of moral authority when he used the both sides language well now Senator Tim Scott is defending the president and saying look he has taken in, in the senator's words a number of steps to move us in a better direction he says this is a positive step in the right direction do you agree with Senator Scott uh, I agree with actions. Uh, Senator Scott can uh, say, you know, those things in, about the President of the United States, but I can tell you, uh, I can tweet out whatever I want, but my actions are what's going to speak louder. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the things that he's done, not only towards, um, you know, Muslim Americans, but also towards my Latino neighbors, towards my African American neighbors in my district. I can tell you that this president uh, has felt, we have felt the sense of that it's us versus them, uh, this kind of feeling that maybe because of, you know, being a child of immigrants or uh, being somebody that is African American in our country, that somehow we get all these other labels that come along with it that makes us so-called less American. And that's how we've been feeling with this president. And so but I can tell you it's been uh, very much a very much of passion of mine mm -hmm. to continue showing people, not only through my election, so but also uplifting other women that are running for office. Let me ask you about uh, action you would take uh, should you be elected in November. Because you said on CNN last week that you, your words probably not when you were asked if you would support Nancy Pelosi to be Speaker of the House should Democrats retake the House. And you, you cited her support for big banks. You said that it is, quote, troubling that she didn't put the people first. What specifically are you talking about? You know, uh, my district is probably the second or third poorest in the country, Poppy. Mm -hmm. uh, what I see is that less than half of my families don't, you know, don't own their own home, primarily because of the discriminatory practices uh, that continue go on with banks and mortgages. What I can tell you, the high rates of car insurance, because the car insurance industry has just been overwhelmingly discriminatory towards my families. And, Over and I, do under, I do understand that I've actually been there and covered it you know, yes. a great deal in and around Detroit, as you know, for the better part of a decade. But, but spe specifically to Pelosi, I mean, those are pretty strong allegations, right? Saying that yeah. she doesn't I mean, care about these people. That this she's, is, well, but this is before that, I got elected. Before I got elected, I have been critical of both Republicans and Democrats that removed the transparency transparency requirements through Dodd-Frank. I mean, these are things that, to me, protect the working class families. These are things that I think are critical to ensuring that we feel like we have a seat at the table. And look, this is a new generation, a new era. 
this is time for a new approach to public so, service that so is so different what, than what we've had. I absolutely, but it's very important to know, I absolutely respected the leadership of, mm -hmm. of Nancy, leader Nancy Pelosi. You should know that I have been so supportive of a number of things that she's done to not only elevate but women, but you think it's time also, for a new voice. I mean, you think it it's time is, for a it new is. voice. There's which, nothing which, wrong. By saying there's a new some... voice doesn't mean that I don't support the work that she's done. What I'm telling I, you I is... I hear that, but let me, let me play what she said over the weekend defending herself, because your calls for new leadership are similar to what some Republicans, including the president, are saying, you know, that it's helpful to them. Uh, they're saying, uh, you know, keep Nancy Pelosi in, in, in power and, le you know, in leadership because that hurts the Democrats, which helps us. So here's how Pelosi defended herself over the weekend. I do not think our opponents should select the leaders of our party. The Republicans are spending millions, tens of millions of dollars against me because they're afraid of me, because I outraise them in, in the political arena, because I outsmart them at the negotiating table, and because I'm a woman who is going to be a seat at that table. Do you think she has a point in this warning uh, to Democrats? I don't know if it's a warning to Democrats as much as to the political culture that's in, in Washington, D.C. Look, I come from a district that doesn't feel like they've been heard by Congress. Mm -hmm. It is overwhelmingly uh, been ignored on a number of fronts. I have a, a city uh, outside of Detroit. I have 12 different communities that doesn't even have a school district, Poppy. Mm -hmm. I have areas where th literally the environmental issue is the core of the fact that they are not able to have a right to breathe clean air. I mean, mm -hmm. one of five children have asthma. I have another area in my district that you look, turn around the corner, you see more poverty, you see more decay. And so what I'm telling you is that we don't feel like we have a seat at the table and they are priority to me and I am going to go there. And I said probably not because I want to make sure that they have a voice in the leader mm -hmm. that's going to run uh, the United States Congress. Do, and do that you is my right that, to be able to speak you, on their behalf and to and say. And you have spoken about people you call democratic sellouts that you think frankly yeah. don't care about the people you just uh, elaborated on. I is Nancy don't Pelosi care as much as disconnected, Is Nancy Poppy. Pelosi a, a democratic sellout in your mind? Disconnected. Is she, is she disconnected from those people? I think so. Okay, finally, before you go, you have joined the movement to abolish ICE, as some of, you know, man, many of your fellow Democrats in Congress have as well. Um, but critics say, look, that energizes the, uh, the Republican base, that energizes the president who can point at Democrats and say, see, you don't care about border security. What's your reaction to that? I don't look at this issue as strategic political strategy. Abolishing ICE protects my families from the militarization that is happening in our neighborhoods. I am from southwest Detroit, where literally the border to Canada. And all I see is border patrol, field operators, all of this so-called militarization happening. I have parents dropping their kids off at school poppy and getting arrested and detained in front of their child's school. Do we so need their so priority we should to and me can and I will debate not, the practice will not, of it. Poppy right, we should debate the practice, but do we a need practice border? practice of it, they didn't exist do we before. Need, do we they need border security before, at all? So I am not do going we need to make a, a decision based on whether or not politically it is helpful uh, for the Republicans or Democrats. Thanks. Is it helpful for the families of the 13th Congressional District to abolish ICE? Do, Absolutely do we, it is. Do we need border security? Do we need some form of ICE? We had it. We had it before ICE. Thank you for being with us. Thank I have a lot you. more to get to, so I hope you come back and join me again. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Poppy, for having me.